Okay, so today we are going to go over advanced automation. And before we get like too deep into it, let me kind of give you guys the scenario. You can look at my pretty background while we discuss the scenario. Um, so essentially what we're going to work through today is an example. Hopefully we'll be able to get everything from start to finish of uh, adding personalized images to our campaign. So the people we're going to add to these personalized images is going to be very specific. Um, and so we need to think through a lot of different like intricacies regarding this overall automation. So to properly uh, go about adding all these personalized images to our campaign, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in uh, some dummy data so that we can play with it. So for our, oh, also we're going to add, the image we're going to add is going to be a meme and I will need your guys' votes on a good sad cat to pick at some point. We'll get there. We're not quite there yet, but we'll, we will get there. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to create, for the purposes of this, just a blank Airtable base so that uh, nothing, I don't mess anything up. Or if I do mess anything up, it's no big deal. So in this particular instance, uh, we're just going to have this be our raw data, and we're not going to have anything coming back to here, checking anything. We're just going to use this as our simple database. We're not going to set up auto importing or anything. Um, so in this case, right, like we need a first name and a last name. We need, we're going to have this be our image space. We're going to have this be our uh, connection. Uh, I'm going to just put a space. So we'll have our first name, last name, image. Oh, my connection A didn't actually get created. Expandy is kind of picky about field names, so we are going to take out all of the spaces and put underscores in them. So we are going to get rid of this note. Well, we'll leave the status in, actually. So the fields that we're kind of working with here, first name, last name, connection A, image, and then we need two more fields. We need an email field and a um, LinkedIn link field. So, so we'll have our LinkedIn URL field and then our email field. So for this example, I'm just going to put myself in here. We're going to leave this image blank. The LinkedIn URL. I'll just go to my LinkedIn real quick. In. Oh, paste it in the wrong spot. My bad. Okay, so we have all this stuff. Now we need to make sure that our name is a completely unique field. Oh, you know, actually, I lied. We need two more fields. We need title and company. Okay. So we have all of these fields. This is our, our raw data in this particular instance. What we're going to do is we're going to send this information to a separate application that we do use internally for automatic image generation called Placid. And we're going to add in our templates to make sure the data is pulling in right and that we have all the fields that we need. 
And we are just going to edit this to uh, be a formula field. And we're just going to quickly, and if I'm moving really quickly, I like I said, I am recording this. I am just trying to get through all of the things so that we can ideally get through uh, the entire automation setup. So that uh, we have this as a good example. We only have like 22 minutes left, so I might be hurrying. So if you get lost, I'm sorry, I will send the recording in the general chat uh, when we're done. And it will also be added to our uh, training documents database. So I have my dummy data. Here's where we go. For this particular example, like I said, we're going to use uh, Placid, which is a horrible name for an application. But it actually works pretty well. So essentially what we're going to do is we are going to add a new project. And here I'm just going to put like a image campaign test. We're going to use Airtable. So first thing we have to do is we have to create a template for our images. So that's where our sad cat is going to come in. Okay. So we now can start creating our template. So we'll just do like a square image. We'll keep it simple. We'll create new. We won't, we don't need to use any of their templates. So the way this software works, it's like everything's done in layers. It's very similar to other uh, like photo software, except it has all the like automation capability. So what we're doing here is this is just our image box. So once this is done, then and I'm going to have it go a little bit over the edge so it doesn't so we don't have weird like white edges. So we have this new picture layer the image we're going to select an image because otherwise it's just going to be this by default okay this cat looks awfully sad that's perfect that's how we want it then we are going to add our text here we want the format to be like meme text type format. So we want it to be bold. We want there to be an outline. We want it to be just like really easily read. So there's a lot of options here. I am going to go this one. And the text is going to be black. We want it to actually be way bigger than this. So I'm going to select like 50, 50 font size. Oh, that's also not big enough. Maybe it is. Because we have this text here, what we're going to end up using for this particular text layer is going to be a value that we are going to generate. So in this case, because we want it all to like space out properly, we're going to calculate this text value in Airtable. So we're going to meme text one and that's going to be a formula I'm going to use a good old concatenate formula and we are going to concatenate uh, when First name, looks at 
your profile and doesn't connect. Okay, so this is not right because I needed to add another space in here. There we go. So this is the text that the <laughs> good one, Destiny. <laughs> um, so this is the meme text is me when Larissa looks at your profile and doesn't connect. We are going to go in our editor and it's just going to say like, our default text is going to be just in case, let's say it doesn't have first name to pull through or something. Or We're going to adjust our text formatting down here. We want it to, you could have it all be up, be all uppercase. Uh, we want just adjusting all of our settings real quick, making sure that we're good. We don't actually want word break on. And there is somewhere that you can have like a border around it. And I don't know why that's not showing. Because a border would make it much easier to read. Maybe this font just doesn't allow for one. Oh, no, I don't like that. Oh, actually, that's not as bad. We'll just use this one. It's fine. I am going to move our sad cat down a little bit. Because I want this to be like easily read. We are going to make sure that uh, we're editing our title here and I'm going to select it to be the same thing that our text value is here just so it's really simple really easy so I'm going to edit the name of this to mean text one so it's just very clear what goes where and we're going to save I'm also going to rename this template actually sad cat one Okay, so this is saved, we're good. This text up here will be variable, will be dynamic depending on the values we pull through. So now we need to uh, connect Airtable account. It should already be connected, but I guess I just have to add our Airtable API key one more time. Pretty sure. It should already be in here, but whatever. Nobody look at my API key. So, now we go to the next step. Add API key. That should get where we need to go. And now we create and run an action to start. Okay, so this is going to be create. I'm actually also gonna add a field. Uh, no, I'm not, Never mind. So on demand, we're just gonna in this, in for the purposes of this, we're gonna just set it up to where we just have to manually push run in here. We could set it up to just automatically run whenever somebody meets various conditions. In this case, it, the conditions would probably just be like, has first name, like first name is not empty. So we'll just do daily. We're gonna leave our action webhook blank. Our base ID, we are going to find here. So in the uh, help, you'll find 
your API documentation for this particular base. So if setting this up anywhere else, please note that like all of these keys and stuff are different. So the table name needs to match exactly. So this is raw data. We don't have a view. We aren't going to add any additional filters or anything. We have this uh, template. So all we're going to do is we're going to adjust the meme text one, and it's going to be the exact same. I usually recommend uh, copying and pasting it in directly. So these are our input fields. This is where it's going to get this variable text. Now we need to tell it where to put the image. So we are going to tell it to put the image URL or just the image itself here in this image field. So assuming this is all set up properly, which for this case, I think it is, we should be able to just run. And let's see how that looks on this end. So we have images start coming in. That's great. This is the one we care about. When Larissa looks at your profile and doesn't connect, perfect. I'm just gonna delete these two other fields. So we have all this, that's all good, right? So we have an image, it's been created. Uh, if somebody receives this, hopefully they'll know that we're very sad they didn't connect with us. Um, and now we have to actually figure out how to send them this image. So we are also going to quickly, because I know that we're going to need a URL for this particular image, and we want it to link to the Airtable URL, not a Placid URL, which is why I didn't put in a, a space under the Placid URL area. Um, so we're going to add in formula and we're going to get the URL, the hmm. it might actually be able to just pull this URL through. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, you know what? Because we have to export and add this list as a CSV, it's not actually going to work. Okay. I'll just add an image URL field and that should solve our problem. So I'm going to delete this and run it one more time so we can manually run it, create all of our sad cat memes, come in here. It should update with the new meme. Oh, that's the exact same, but I didn't edit my, uh, setup down here. There we go. Now we're just going to delete this again and try one more time because I forgot to do that piece. Okay. Now, hopefully the image and the associated image URL will pull through. So we have an image, we have an image URL. If we click this, it takes us here. That's good. That's what we want. And now what we do is we are going to export this list as a CSV. So we have all this stuff. Then we are going to go to, uh, in this case, Expandy. So I already have like a base level campaign set up on Andres' account. And by base level campaign, I mean, I haven't done anything. I pressed campaign, new builder campaign with nothing in it. So I'm actually going to start by importing my CSV so that all of my values come through. And then we just need to route all of these uh, values. So this one's going to be first name, last name, dynamic placeholder, profile link. 
email. So we have like two things pulling through here, but this, as you can kind of see, it's like sort of cutting off the last character here, but this is going to be .jpg. So if we just send somebody this, it's not going to do anything. So we're going to go ahead and skip that. And we're going to use our image link as this one. We're going to send our CSV for processing, and then we're going to set up like a very simple campaign, right? So in the context of the meme we had created, somebody would be sent this uh, if we had sent them a connection message, and then they viewed our profile, but they didn't connect with us. So this one's going to be start. First thing we want to do is send a connection request. And it's just going to be, hey, first name in this instance. Let's connect. We'll keep it very simple here. We're not going to have an alternate body or anything. Now what we want to do is add a couple conditions, right? So let's say if they connect, then cool. We'll send them a message that's just going to say, hey, thanks for connecting. If they don't connect, we are going to check to see if they visited our profile. If they didn't connect, but they did visit our profile, then we're going to send them Oh, I forgot, we can't actually send them a just a normal message. So because of the way LinkedIn works, if we visit it, if we send them a connection request, they haven't connected with us, but they did view our profile. Because we've already sent them a connection request, we can't send them any additional messages. So if they haven't connected, then we can send them either an email or an open in-mail. So we're going to look first for open in-mail. So basically what this is doing is it's checking to see if we can send them in mails, in which case then we will send them an open in mail. And we're going to say, you know, I'm just going to add in this dynamic placeholder of the, the image. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and assume it's this unnamed six. And So I'm just going to assume it's this unnamed six. It's probably actually not. But because that variable didn't end up getting named, that's just for assumption's sake, what we're going to have in there. And then we need to have the other condition of, well, what if they don't have open in mail? Then we need to send them an email instead. Oh, I guess we have to check to see if email exists first. And then if email exists, then we can send them. Bye, Sarah. 
And then here again, we would just place that image. So that is as quick of an example of a very complex automation as I can give you in this short amount of time. So other steps we can do to make this automation more robust, more complete would be to uh, actually finish setting up this campaign and make sure all of the uh, placeholders and everything are correct. Then, you know, run tests to make sure the messages are coming through properly. We could also set this up to where it automatically is generating the images. And ideally also we could set it up in Expandy to where it automatically uploads this data to Expandy. So all we have to do basically is add data in. And then it will create an image. It will add it to our campaign. They will go through all of these steps and all of these conditions in our campaign so that we can reach them. So that's, like I said, the quickest example of complex automation is I can give you, but uh, really what differentiates simple automation from complex automation is more so like a lot of times you're connecting multiple apps together, you're creating systems that are like overarching systems. So they accomplish a much larger mission uh, or they just have a lot of steps, a lot of conditions, a lot of logic that needs to be thought about to set them up. So that's really the differentiation here between kind of maybe what we've done earlier in this training series versus what we've done now. So if you have any questions, please do let me know. But that's kind of the whole spiel.